Welcome to the World History One lecture series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10 second delay. Use this time to pause the presentation and complete your notes. When you are done, push play and you will move forward. This lecture will begin in 5 seconds. Welcome to World History One Lecture 5.8 on the Peloponnesian Wars and let's look at the original reality game show Survivor. Survivor has been around for a long time but the basic idea remains the same. One person must outwit, outplay, and outlast everyone else to win the grand prize. But this is how it normally starts. You usually have these teams and then two people will get together and this is what happens. The one guy will say, hey, let's work together to have a better chance at winning. And the other person will say, that sounds like a great idea. And we've formed something called an alliance. Two people working together for a common goal. And then you always have this guy here on the bottom. He says, I'm going to go hide in a tree. But once the other teams, these other alliances are defeated, we have a problem. The alliance here is going to split. One person is going to say, I'm going to win this, and the other person says, I'm going to win this. And the guy on the bottom says, I'll wait till they are weak. And once these two people have fought each other, the guy on the bottom sweeps in and wins the game. Well, the Peloponnesian Wars look just like Survivor. It's Athens versus Sparta, and whoever's left standing will be the winner. But the question is, at what cost? With that said, go to the next slide. Let's look at the two major players in the Peloponnesian Wars. As you've already learned, Athens and Sparta got together to beat the Persians, and they won the Persian Wars. But now that's over, and Athens and Sparta are going to compete against each other. Athens is the Greek city-state. It's on the Balkan Peninsula, so it's got a great geographic setting. It has a powerful navy, so it's strong, and it's at the center of the Greek world. In other words, Athens is the real deal. Sparta is powerful, yet it's wanting. It wants more. It's on the Peloponnesian Peninsula, so it's not really in the middle of everything. It has a powerful land-based army, and it's not so much when it comes to importance. It's not that important. In other words, they're the wannabes. So now we've got the real deal, Athens versus the wannabes, the Spartans. Go to the next slide. Like everything else you've learned in world history this year, the four causes of the Peloponnesian Wars is based mainly on geography. First, Sparta fears a powerful Athens, which is only 94 miles away. Sparta is afraid that if Athens gets too powerful, they're going to come on down onto the Peloponnesian Peninsula and they're going to take Sparta out. Second, both city-states want to control the Greek world. Both city-states work together to defeat the Persians, and they both want to be in charge of Greece. Third, Athens dominates the Dalian League and controls most of Greece through its allies. What does that mean? The Dalian League, as you learned, was formed to protect the Greeks from the Persians. But the Athenians have taken this league over, and now they've created what's about as close to an empire as you're going to see by creating all these allies around the Aegean Sea. Finally, Sparta creates the Peloponnesian League to protect itself and its allies against Athens. The Dalian League is no longer there to protect everybody from the Persians, so the Spartans create their own league to protect themselves from the Athenians. Four causes of the Peloponnesian Wars. Go to the next slide. The start of the Peloponnesian War in 431 BCE is probably one of the coolest military stories in all of world history. We call this Fortress Athens. 
Athens knows that Sparta will attack, but Athens cannot beat Sparta's army. The Athenians say, we can't beat these guys. So they've got to come up with a rational way to protect themselves and beat the Spartans. Luckily for them, they have Pericles, who builds a wall around Athens and the road that links the city to its port to protect the city from the Spartans. Now the Athenians can get goods in, they don't have to go outside, and they've protected themselves. The Spartans cannot attack, and the Athenians use their navy to win the battle. This is brilliant. Go Pericles. So at the start of the war, it's Athens 1, Sparta 0. Go to the next slide. Unfortunately for the Athenians, it's all downhill from here. Pericles dies. Uh-oh. Pericles is the mastermind of Athenian society. He's the man, and the man is now dead, and the Athenians cannot find a good leader. A leaderless society is in big trouble, and Athens makes multiple mistakes. Fortress Athens backfires. A major portion of the population is going to get sick because they're all living in these walls and this disease comes in called the plague and it kills a lot of people. Even though this happens, the Athenians try to take over the Greek world, but they keep losing over and over again. And then the Athenians try to take over the island of Sicily, which is to the west of Greece. It's really far away, and they fail. And the Spartans actually help the Sicilians. So at the end of the war, the Spartans finally beat the Athenians. Sparta, winners. Athens, not so much. Sparta is now in control of Greece. Go to the next slide. Yay for Sparta, you won the Peloponnesian War, but it took a long time, 431 BCE to 404 BCE. In other words, it's been 28 years since Sparta first attacked Fortress Athens, and this long war is going to cause major problems that will lead to the downfall of Hellenic Greece. Both Sparta and Athens lose a lot of people fighting this war. There are not a lot of soldiers left in Sparta in case somebody rolls in and tries to take over. The war leads to the end of democracy as we know it in Athens. The death of Socrates is an example of the problem. That's the end of people ruling themselves. The war caused a curtailment or a slowing of Greek cultural growth and achievement. In other words, the golden age of Greece is long gone. This is what Plato was complaining about. And finally, the city-states are now isolated from each other. There is no mutual protection from outside forces. You're going to learn about one of those outside forces next class, and I'll tell you, the outlook not so good for our friends in ancient Greece. That's it for this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.